Hello, hello. We did it. We made it for another week of the Fireside Tales with Indigo. That's me. How's it going? I am the man in this box. Um, we are going to be diving into another week of um, the Hidden Shrine of Tomoja. It is the uh, third adventure in uh, the series of adventures uh, from uh, TSR. Uh, it is... Um, uh, the series of adventures is called The Tales of the Yawning Portal. Uh, all of these adventures were taken from uh, different eras of uh, D&D and uh, put into um, a series of dungeons that will get, take a character from first level all the way up to about 15th level or so. Um, and we were kind of going through these uh, pre-made adventures um, just to kind of get me updated with the 5e rule set uh, and my... Uh, D&D days were kind of in the second edition, and we're up to a fifth edition now. So we're kind of updating me with a lot of these uh, rule sets and whatnot. Um, and these guys have uh, generously uh, decided to jump onto this project and uh, have some fun uh, doing a little Dungeons and Dragons thing here, telling some stories and uh, having a good time with that. Um, as is my want, I definitely have kind of you know made some changes to these adventures and kind of. Uh, um, uh, just kind of change the flavor a little bit um, of uh, some of the direction. Um, I think they're uh, amazing adventures as they are, um, but and they're also really good for allowing a GM to um, kind of expand upon or play with them or make little tweaks and changes to kind of, you know, turn them into their own story. And I definitely appreciate that about these adventures as well. And I have definitely done that. As these guys know, I have uh, taken a few liberties with uh, these adventures as well as their own backstories and kind of made them uh, personal to these players and to these characters. And, and it's been a lot of fun up till now. Uh, as I said, we just uh, kind of dove into uh, the third adventure, The Hidden Shrine of Tomoe Chan. These guys kind of met a couple of new party members and have uh, um, dove into, literally, or fallen into, as it were, this ancient um, Mesoamerican-themed dungeon. Um, and that is uh, like the uh, you know, uh, Central American, Aztec, and Mayan um, kind of uh, civilizations, as far as what the theme is for this adventure. And it's been a lot of fun. Uh, to, to get started into this. Uh, last week, we were kind of uh, messing around in this first chamber. They did discover that this uh, temple seems to be full of some sort of a poisonous gas, which has definitely put an urgency to this situation that they hadn't experienced in other dungeons cool. before. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in the process of this first battle, one of the party members was kind of separated from the party by this gigantic slab of stone, um, shortly before this battle erupted. So we're kind of in the aftermath of this battle. And so that is going to be where we jump right back into this week. I'm going to go ahead and get everybody over there to this dungeon. And let's go ahead and get... Some ambiance. So, when last we joined these hardworking men and women of our company, the Dragon Spear Fellowship. Is that too loud for anybody? Any of this background stuff going on here? Everybody's good. It's all right. Okay. So, uh, where we left off, um, you guys uh, had just defeated some of these uh, tokens uh, that had been in these little uh, niches kind of spread around this chamber here. Uh, some of them had fallen off in the last little uh, uh, tremor from the settling of the earth and had instantly sprung to full-size life and had attacked the party. Uh, some of these tribal members down here 
happen to be members of the Jaguar tribe, and these guys um, in um, the Mesoamerican times definitely revered um, animal totems and uh, the spirits of these creatures. And um, this tribe in particular um, revered the Jaguar, and seeing with this member of the party, Rafiki, standing here amongst them, seeing this anthropomorphic jaguar man standing there before them, how could they think anything but this must be some sort of divine embodiment of the jaguar spirit. <laughs> and instantly <coughs> fell to worshipping this cat man, this guide for the rest of the party through the chambers of Tomorrow. And possibly striking a bit of ire in our little goblin friend who has been trying to build his own little following, his own little army of minions through several sessions, a year of adventuring now, our little warlock has been attempting to build a flock. And within a day of traveling, with this cat man. <laughs> Watched him build an assemblage of followers already. So, let's go ahead and pick off with the party here. And uh, you definitely do hear these humans starting to <coughs> kind of reacting to this amber gas like presence in the air. So. I just want to be clear on this. There are hinges on the ins, like there's hinges on our side of the door. Mm -hmm. And Bresnik, you kind of um, just kind of like <clears throat> come to yourself in the corner, and you realize that your narcolepsy had indeed kind of captured you uh, in the moment um, as you were kind of uh, searching the perimeter of this room. You find yourself kind of like slumped up against the corner with your face pressed against the stone. And as you come to, you're like, God, again? <laughs> oh, you killed him. He's and dead. you see Mara kind of studying this door. Um, are, are you still studying the door, or had you kind of moved around the room? Uh, I was studying the door. I'm pretty sure, like, as a human being, I know that if you remove a hinge from doors, it's the hinges are there to support the side of the wall that it's attached to uh, the structure. So when you remove a hinge from something from a door, it falls in the direction of whatever the hinges were placed. So we could theoretically try and take these hinges off, but then the, the wall would probably fall on us. Like, the door would probably fall on That's how it works in real life. I don't know <clears throat> How it happens in the game world, but as a as a person, I know. But would not Mara know that about a stone door that's, in an ancient that's temple? <laughs> um, there's stone hinges, the bones of the wall. You can't touch them. Lose the idea. <laughs> I mean, as a dwarf, well, as a dwarf, would with, with who knows stone stone masonry and other things like that, maybe. Brasnick would know that? Yes. At the, so talking as Brasnick, they're probably stone hinges. Leave them alone. Oh, my man. Uh, okay. Yeah, and as Brasnick does kind of come to Mara, kind of throwing out the suggestion, yeah. just automatically including our resident yeah. dwarf in the conversation as he rejoins consciousness. Well, that goes by <clears throat> bypass this whole thing if we just found a way to take the door off and <coughs> make it fall down or something. Is is the door locked? Yes. I don't see myself. Oh, yes, you're actually in, uh, you're hidden at the moment. Um, so, speaking of Rattle, um, I think your, uh, your mic is hot. I don't know if you have a push to talk or not, Gok. Uh, it, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Ratul, you find yourself um, behind, uh, you had heard a loud rumble. 
and then all of a sudden the earth had started shifting again above you and a huge block of stone had kind of slammed down in front of you and you saw another one kind of slammed down on top of that and you were able to kind of get your arms up to brace it and as the rock started uh, uh, stopped shifting and finally settled you found yourself in, inside a, a kind of a tightly packed little uh, alcove in there um, after attempting to call out to your friends, you, you realize that they cannot hear you. Oh, we're ignoring you. <laughs> or they're in the middle of a fight and they just were really distracted. <laughs> Alright. Does this alcove look like it's closed off? Or does it just seem like I'm kind of boxed into like a closet space? I... Uh, both. It is definitely um, <clears throat> have it has been closed off um, by the stone around you, and you can tell that you are going to have a limited amount of breathing time in here. I just crack my neck, crack my knuckles, set in my body to position, and worm, 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 worm. Okay, go ahead and roll um, some unarmed attacks. Uh, everybody else go ahead and roll perception. Slow, how are you turning to drum levels like? Give me a moment just to get things moving because this is a big screen and my computer is dying somehow. It is a very large screen. Oh. He's dying here. Here we go. Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm just waiting for Roll 20 to stop dying. Okay. They're starting to come through now. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll a uh, DC 13 dexterity check. Uh, just from the falling rubble, uh, as you start um, pounding at this rock, you, uh, some of the other stuff starts sh uh, shifting around you, and rocks start falling around you and hitting you. Um, you do take three points of damage. Wait, dexterity save or dexterity check? Dexterity saving throw. I'll have advantage for this. And there we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. 18. Okay. Uh, so you're not going to be buried uh, by this rubble as it, as it falls down around you. Um, the rest of the party that rolls their perception checks, uh, anyone over um, 15, um, definitely Mara, all of a sudden you hear a <coughs> coming from the west end of this chamber where this pile of rubble is uh, I want to be that close to it okay um, um, go ahead and roll the damages on those uh, those rolls uh, all four of them the 10 is good enough to hit you're, you're right there so Yep, let me just go ahead and make sure their their uh, extra damages are checked off. Yep, everything I'm going to call everyone over and it's like, it sounds like your tool's trapped under them. Can we get some assistance? As you come closer, these humans kind of move away from you. Fearfully. Buying you. Um, I'll just kind of run up and if I see any cracks or something starting to fear, I'll, I'll run the spear into it and try to pry it open the back of it for the base. Okay, ignore the fire. Try to now. wedge it. I can tell these people to for us. <sighs> okay. <coughs> Just keep so we got uh... a total of 34 bludgeoning and piercing damage. Okay. <clears throat> so as you guys, uh, as you start smashing your way out of this thing, um, Drek and Mara, as you come closer, you uh, definitely um, see this huge block of stone starting to shudder. 
and finally you see it just crack right down the middle and you see these big huge uh, green paws get in between them and start shoving these huge um, uh, half pieces of this uh, slab of stone aside. You also hear this kind of settling of the earth and this rumbling happening above and around you. Go ahead and make one more strength roll to try and get these huge halves of this slab of stone out of the way enough for you to get out of here. Can I assist him? Mm-hmm. Because when I, when I saw it happen, I was said I was going to start prying it open with the spear. Go so ahead crack and formed. Uh, Ratul, roll with advantage. And then Mara, Druk, and Ratul roll those uh, DC 13 dexterity saving throws. Oh, am I close enough to that that I'll get hit? Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm trying to back off, but oh well. Uh, roll a... Uh... I was just trying to get people's attention where he was. But it's fine. We'll say it just goes to here. That's fine. Want me to make one more deck save? Yeah. Alright, Druk makes it. And Red Tool makes it. And that athletics is definitely good enough. So you finally see, you hear this. As these huge pieces of stone are shoved aside, and you see your mighty green friend, Red Tool, as he emerges from his stone <coughs> prison the west end of this chamber. <coughs> um, more rock and detritus does fall uh, down and around you guys. Uh, Druk is going to take three points of damage. Red Tool will take four. Ouch. Uh, but you do manage to And, that, and that's with our save? Yes. It would have been uh, more. And you would have been buried in stone if you didn't save. <laughs> Welcome to Tomoe Chan, my friends. <clears throat> I guess as he uh, as he steps out of the stone, and we're, I'm helping him out of the rock. Uh, good to see you, friend. Thought you had been crushed. I was born with the earth. It would take more than the earth to crush me. He's the father of us. Say that. <laughs> That's what they all say. But I don't know. Good. All right. So that is good. And as you can see, I finally got a nice little token for our friend Jot. Thanks, Devin Knight. You're awesome. Nice art- artwork. Very nice token. Uh, I oh, that's something still- somebody made for us. Nice. What is going on here? Oh, Gibbs. What are you doing? Uh Hi. Hi, Lurker. Gibbs, how you doing? She just donated a bunch of of bits. You know what? I still haven't figured out prizes for bits. What should I give out as prizes for bits? Uh, It's appropriate. I mean, you do do advantage for money, so are, are bits a free currency, or do you earn them somehow? Um... No, you have to pay you a fair amount to, of money. You have to buy bits, and then you can go around and donate them to people. Well, in that okay. case, maybe... I'm not familiar with it, that's why I asked. No, you're good. Um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe either... Maybe some goals where if you donate enough bits, you start earning some free loot and stuff. I think I'm can, just like, going to maybe have, like, party. story I'm element cool. prizes for bits, maybe. If you donate enough bits, then you can... Have uh, talked to me about some game altering story element that I'll introduce to torment these guys with. Well, I mean, <clears throat> introduce to the to to game to uh, tell okay. a better story. Yes. Or you so give us being said, use real money, not bits. You have to spend real money to buy the bits. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, but if they, if they use, I, I get that. But if they use the real money and give a cash, it's advantage. If they give bits, it's a potential for hazardous. It's all potential for hazardous. They're just going to all donate to me now. I get all the dice rolls and all the advantage, and you guys are going to suffer and die. Either watch ad or pay for them. The DM gets Same. something. <laughs> all right, until we figure that out, Gibbs is amazing. Oh, she said the DM so gets something. Yeah. See? Thank you. The DM gets Even something. Even though you get 
She just said it right over there. Just read it. Thanks for everyone that's hanging out with us. We appreciate you for that, definitely. Um, so you guys are in a very toxic environment, and I am not talking about my D&D game. I am talking about the Zen Shrine of Tomoe Jen and the amber color, the amber texture of the air in this dungeon. And we're probably pushing on about 25 to 30 minutes so far in this dungeon. Get that door open. What is it? Big guy. Uh, go. I still think we should take the hinges off. <clears throat> well, I guess we should ask Brasnick. Did you figure out the door? But I checked all the murals and none of them matched the symbol on this door. The eight holes inside the door are circular shaped, but none of the figurines around here seem to fit. Is it a puzzle or is it just a simple lock? This thing in the middle first dip, but have we tried to move it? Like, there's, sure. there's, that's where the statues are, right? That created all of these dudes. And the, the statues fell from all of the, all of the various murals from around the, the, the oh, room. I thought they were from the centerpiece. No, there, I believe there are some on the centerpiece, but like the, with the, I guess the, the blue guy there that we knocked out, still on the ground at the moment. He came. They all came from that middle one to the left. All those down there came from the bottom right, and then the ones that they were fighting ahead of them came from the middle right. And I think the two, the two uh, regular people fell from the bottom left. They were all, I think, different tribes or something like that. It's, he told us about it last week, and I took a few notes, but. There are definitely different dioramas um, as you start looking around uh, the chamber at the different alcoves uh, depicting various aspects of um, uh, tribal life uh, in the Mesoamerican uh, time period. Um, you know, hunting, gathering, um, making pots, um, uh, fishing, uh, things of that nature. You also saw one alcove where they were, um, it looked like the uh, a scene of the creation of the earth and the gods that were involved in uh, this creation of the earth uh, story uh, that the Mesoamerican people of this uh, land believed and um, definitely the description that I put into chat there is uh, going to be kind of what you see as you look over this door President. Could there be a switch inside the holes? I'm not. Well, if we ten minutes, I can use. The, wait, actually, do I even have that spell anymore? Quick question. If uh, we do wait ten minutes, I can do detect magic to see if it's a magically, like a magic door. You but can we don't start really that if you wish. Uh, yes, I was going to ask. Uh, this thing in the center room, is this like a giant sundial? Um, it is also um, a diorama. And you can see, let's see. Uh, the shape in the center of the chamber appears to be a small alcove, uh, protected by a half dome with the open end facing toward the door in the east wall. This alcove is set in a recessed, shallow, tiled well, one foot deep. So it's sitting down in the ground where that circle is. And uh, it's 10 feet wide. The alcove itself is four feet high, and the recess contains some sort of display. Uh, the display there appears to be a diorama depicting a hunting party of Olmen warriors. And that is the, uh, the people, the humans that lived in this area um, long time in the past. Um, these Ullman warriors are uh, dressed in feathers and deer hide garments in a mountainside scene. Some have pulled down a stag with the aid of a uh, mastiff, and another group is cleaning a small mule deer, and others have cornered a panther with their spears. Um, you're not going to see that panther on there, actually, because it kind of fell off of this diorama and actually turned into a panther who uh, 
ended up befriending um, our our own Panther man, Rafiki. Uh, he is now sitting there just kind of chilling by Rafiki's side. Um, you can see also that there uh, appears to be a scout um, in an outcropping above the rest of this scene. And it seems to, uh, some of these guys have fallen over. Obviously the Jaguar did fall off of uh, this diorama. Um, but this guy seems to be kind of fixed to this rock that he's uh, standing on and he's holding this metal staff with a loop in its end. Uh, the staff looks like a shepherd's crook. And you see more of these dioramas in all of these niches around this room. Are yeah. any more fixed uh, little figurines in these dioramas at all? I mean, I think I already tried uh, seeing if they would fit into the holes last week. I believe well, I'm, really did not. I'm specifically asking if there are any more fixed ones like the scout. Oh. Um, the rest of them are loose, but the scout itself, you said, is fixed. It does, as Drek was kind of going through last week, kind of checking out each one of these individually. Um, he did kind of pick some up. Um, uh, Rafiki had even picked up this guy here, the unconscious one, and tried to shove him back into a niche to see if he would, like, turn back into a little figure again, which he just kind of flopped in there like a person would do, being shoved into a hole that's too small. And then he kind of just threw the guy back on the ground. Um, in the process of that, definitely knocking over most of the little figurines uh, in that little alcove itself. Um, uh, on retrospect with Brasnick's question, um, you, you don't recall seeing any of these other guys that seem to be fixed in place. Maybe rip him off. Don't rip him off. Don't rip him off. Just twist slightly. See if he moves. See if he moves at all. Are you gonna go and smack oh, this do. this thing, Bresnik? Mm, sure, why not? I was gonna see if I could try to move out. I was gonna see if I could try to move the actual half circle. Like, see if I could twist it. The circle's in the ground, isn't it? Yeah, it is a giant piece of stone uh, that seems to be coming out of the ground. Uh, Bresnik, go ahead and uh, roll investigation, and then add your mechanics. Your mechanics dwarf in a special ability to that. Alright, so investigation and a plus one. Uh, if you would like to roll an athletics check to try and uh, move the stone, please do so. I will. <sighs> nice cup of coffee, sweet nectar of the gods. Just like. So a total of 28 for investigation. <clears throat> you learned everything. <laughs> after after uh, coming over and looking at this um, diorama uh, Ratul after uh, uh, grabbing a hold of this thing you start trying to turn it you can definitely feel like this this piece of stone is fixed solidly uh, within the earth um, indeed <laughs> okay that's there <laughs> Um, so, uh, Bresnik, as you come over, you start looking at it, and you kind of do, after asking your question, you're kind of looking quizzically at uh, this scout. You kind of look over, and just poking the shepherd's crook just a little bit, you realize that it's loose in this scout's hand as he's holding it. Let me go ahead and carefully take that away from the scout. So he's kind of got the uh, the kung fu grip going on, uh, GI Joe, and so you're able to uh, basically be able to uh, slide it out of said kung fu grip and get the shepherd's crook, the small staff in your hand. I'm gonna give it like a minute to see if its size changes at all. Just real quick, because everything else is chain size once it leaves the diorama. So I'm sort of like waiting for it. Mm -hmm. It no? does not, and there is okay. no Indiana Jones moment. Uh, there is no giant rolling ball to descend upon you all. <laughs> Good. It doesn't. It doesn't trigger me. Like you know, no flashback to sides. Don't let him killing, trick you. That's you know, for you. No sir. That's uh, for good. No, no blade pops up to try and kill me. I'm good. Okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I just died. Go back over towards the 
I would not do any such thing to you guys. Ah, uh, you say that now. Didn't you already put a scythe in his chest? <laughs> I didn't do it. That was the... I'm blaming TSR for that. I'm putting this on you guys. If any of you are watching, it's your fault. <laughs> I know that adventure was written in like 93 or some shit, but it's still your fault. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Gibbs. That's the reason why I don't trust oh. doorways anymore. I just bought some French roast K cups for work. We have a Keurig there, and it's been a brilliant change to my everyday work life. Nice. French roast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, guys, I want to use some of these dice rolls and inspirations that Gibbs has given to me, so how about we get in a fight? What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, thank you. First room, well, we got to get out of here without dying first. Oh, yes, traps. Traps and puzzles. Welcome to so, Tomo Chan. <laughs> traps also get initiative. They're so actually the, uh, golems. Does <laughs> the, uh, the little shepherd's crook actually fit into one of those holes? In the door? It seems to. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it's like these things are about, um, I think, a half an inch in uh, diameter. And so this is kind of a tiny little uh, cook, so it kind of just goes in there. You're able to kind of just tink it around on the sides, um, but it doesn't really seem to do anything. It doesn't seem to fit properly in any of these. Uh, oh, they're about an inch in diameter, so definitely far too big to be affected by this thing. Okay. Take door down. Can I investigate the door? And see if there's like maybe a hidden latch or something. I don't know. Please do. I I feel like there has to be more. If, if there's nothing that we can find here, there's got to be something else that we're missing. Anyone else want to join in on this? And you guys aren't allowing me to try my idea. Uh, yeah, they said you could do sure. the magic detect magic if you wanted to. No, that's not the idea I was talking about. Oh, Resnick, would you there. like to help out? I think oh, you mean give advantage on taking the hand of the what? Was anyone helping? With I that? mean, Brasnick is there at the door. He could help you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead and roll that investigation. Again. And then Brasnick, roll your uh, special roll. No. That's worse. <laughs> um. I will roll so, my investigation roll because I also another two to her. Later. Thirteen, so fifteen on total. Fifteen. Okay. Um, you don't really seem to find uh, anything. Cock. <laughs> so. Okay. I don't find anything. Like I'm getting them out of the way early, right? Okay. <clears throat> oh. You just can't see anything because I'm in the way the whole time. Every time you try to look at it, I'm like pushing you out of the way. Yeah, that's like, about right. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I'm okay, just going to go with that because I was going to make it a lot worse. <laughs> Can I go around and now check all the figurines on all of them and see if there's any others that are carrying any staffs that can be taken away or any weapons that are detachable? Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll investigation. I'll also do that. I'll check along. Let me shake my hand at Gok is like... Yeah, Gok is definitely affecting. As you guys are kind of studying this door and trying, Gok comes over basically, and he's like, "Would you? Can I want to get in here? Can you just let me? Just come? Would you stop putting it in your like face, like hand all the way in the face?" And he's just like, "Would you just?" And basically, completely affects you guys and your ability to investigate this door. Patience is not a virtue right now, and he really wants to get out of here. But he's yeah, doing so, uh, a really good job. He course. did roll a nat one, Gibbs. He did. Our famous goblin in his nat ones. Look, I gotta roll a nat one every game, Gibbs. That's what I'm known He's for. He's just trying to help. The party. It's like the guy, you know when you're like trying to clean up after Christmas and there's that kid that dives into the pile of wrapping paper and he's rolling around and he's like, I'm helping! And you're like, bro, you are not fucking helping right now. That's that's pretty much gawk every week. That really. <laughs> uh, neither me or Ratul apparently either. Yeah, no. Unfortunately, I have, I have the, see. I have the. I have five thumbs for fingers. I don't really have. Yeah, it's just thumbs. It's nothing but thumbs. Did you get that checked out, <laughs> man. Sausage links. 
Gug, so Gibbs identifies with you, Gog, so it's okay. <laughs> so, about this keystone at the top of the door. Mm hmm. So, does the crook line up with that at all? Would you like to roll your own investigation check after having said that, sir? With your, I would. With your mechanics die in addition to said roll? Yes, yes, I would. <laughs> um. It's gonna be a huge corpse. And just because we're. Use You're gonna use uh, inspiration. Mm-hmm. Because we're all in a situation where, well, myself is a little resistant to all this amber whatever in the air. The rest of you, not so much. I got resistance. What are you talking? <laughs> and what is that extra die roll? 17 and 12 of this thing. Okay. Still doesn't uh, really seem to... There may not be anything. He might just be playing us. Doesn't seem to be anything. It's okay. Uh, it's a door. It's supposed to be open. Oh, <laughs> this is the first room, guys. We're gonna die here. I'm, I'm really frustrated. I don't have the spell knock prepared, <laughs> but I do know the spell knock. Which makes this whole thing even more frustrating. That's poison oh. for us. Can Wait, Doc, do you know the spell knock? The door? <laughs> no, I do not, actually. Knock would break through this door. Uh, it's a good thing I don't know it then. Alright, so real quick, just to fill those eight holes where you can't see anything. Is it because you can't see anything because it's dark? Or is like with, with uh, the drift globe now closer? Can you you see anything past those holes as a phlegmatic look? Um, I would say that they just end up disappearing, uh, you know, into the door. You know, even with um, this drift globe kind of floating up to the door, you know, it just kind of ends uh, in the back of the space there. Well, some, I think, Brasnick thinks the scout there with the crook where I just took his phone. Something is important with the scout in this break. There's a reason why it's movable and he was fixed. Okay. Well, I mean, I know we only rolled an 8, but do we, do we find any weapons or anything that could be taken away from the little figures that were detachable like that was? The rest of these figures seem to be um, holding on to their weapons. Uh, just seem to be almost like uh, what we would think of as a uh, an army man. Mm -hmm. If die anyway. I look over. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. look over at Brasnik. It's a stream kitty. Look. Yes. Aww. But I was gonna say, right, I was gonna say, see if that can fit into any of the other turns. Mm, doesn't really look like it. They all have things in their hands already. Then look for one that doesn't. Is there any other figure that doesn't have something but has a hand that looks like you can grab and hold a crook? Uh, you gonna spend a few minutes to look around at these figures? Sure. Okay, all investigation. How thick does the stone seem to be? Very thick. This looks like a big, big stone door. Sixteen. You don't find any other figurines that seem to have uh, the kung fu grip going on. I want to put the grip back into the scout's hand. Okay. Um, and then see, you know, lightly doing it just to make sure I don't break anything. Can I push it further down when, once it's in his hand? You know, like try to activate a switch type of thing. Um, so you set it back into the scout's hand. Uh, you just try and like press it down once yeah. it's there. Um, it, it, it just kind of just sits there, you know, it just, you know, presses into your finger a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be any sort of like a trigger. Mm -hmm. And then, um, holding what the scout. Try removing it and pressing it down. If that's what it was originally removing, it would be its changed state. 
already removed it, nothing happened. I know, but when you took it out, did you try to depress it after it was taken out of his hand? He pressed the scout's hand down after taking the fork out of it? Well, you said you just tried pressing it down with it, with the staff back in its hand, so why don't you take the staff out, then try pushing it down again? Pushing what down? The scout? Yeah. Sure, why not? <clears throat> so yeah, I think it's out of his hand and push down on the scout's head to see if he's a switch. Nothing happens. We'll put the crook back in and try to move the scout, see if he twists or turns at all. No, it seems to be fixed at the start. I go behind the scout and look through the crook's eye. <laughs> <laughs> Zigzag just That's like sitting lie. there watching Brasnick just like fiddle with this thing and get all over it, and he just like crooks his head at you and. Just... Huh. He's making fun of me, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong for real. It was wrong for what? <laughs> Any progress over there? <laughs> Not really. So we're pushing on about 35 minutes. Uh, can I? So I... For, I'm, very, I'm pretty sure the answer is very simple, but we're all just a bunch of dummies right now. I know. We're, we're overthinking it or something. Answer. We, we break the hinges. I want to break the hinges. I'm going to start hitting the hinges with the backside of... Uh, I stand out of the way. Doors fall in whatever direction. <laughs> Just stand to the side. The hinges are always on the side. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, go ahead and make a roll. Let me stand out of the way, too. I don't want a door falling on me. That would be a terrible end to my character. A fitting one, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty hilarious. Huh? Awesome. It would, it would be <laughs> Everyone's hilarious. like, "Let this happen, please." <laughs> <laughs> also, Rafiki, you haven't asked them to try and open the door, have you? What was that? You haven't asked your followers to try to open the door, have you? Oh, we it's just tipped one. <laughs> so what? I forgot about that too. <laughs> no, we um, uh, we asked them last episode. We did, they said they had no idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. That's true. Alright, yeah. uh, what are you attacking this, uh, these hinges with? My, so I'm loaded up. Real slow. Mm -hmm. Roll 20. Oh, has that not responded yet? I'm not seeing any rolls yet. Neither am I. Me neither. Nothing yet. You You're never coming. You click the buttons. <sighs> Now I hit this point up there. I think oh, it hit you like seven. I'm still not seeing it. Weird. Let's see if I can do it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it worked for oh, me. I was, my beer. <laughs> I was trying to get the hand axe to work. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do the spear because I heard a spear can back. We'll go with the spear. I like that knife. <laughs> okay, you were trying to do the hand axe? Yeah, because it made more sense to hit the hand axe. Worked for what? me. How are you clicking this thing? Well, are those good enough to, to hit the hinges? GM powers, my friend. GM powers. Um. They are. Uh, so you're going to use that hand axe attack? Yeah. Right? So as you just pull out your hand axe, as you guys are over here at this diorama trying to mess with it and figure it out, suddenly behind you, you just hear this... <laughs> as it, he pulls out the hand axe and just slams it into you. see a huge chunk of stone go flying off of this hinge from the way to blow. I'm going to try and strike it again. Hey, look, it worked this time. Retool. Oh, 
You I see, approve. You see the foot key working. <laughs> Did you want to go help out? No. Yeah, I'm going to go a... help out since apparently he's using the foot key method. Okay. It's just a, a really upset just... kitty cat. All right. Sometimes you're on the puzzle, except for what? So I would just follow you. <laughs> want me, to, want me to make a couple rolls, DM? Yeah, you're gonna have the the cat man step aside. Step aside. Okay. Yep. As I just go ahead, wind my fist back, and just give. What? How? Ba okay. He's probably finished off the top hinge. No, it looks like it's still connected. Looks like it's about halfway broken through. All right. I'll see if I can go ahead and help finish that off. Okay. Roll that attack. Oh no! Oh, you <laughs> oh, you got your net one too. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, what happens. You, you punch Jot. <laughs> you punch Jot, and he splats into dust. Poof. Um, Josh just sitting there all of a sudden. Oh, what the? F well, I didn't even do the slap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> Um, so you, uh, step forward and you just smash out with the dragon flame cestus and it smashes into this hinge and as you do so, you just kind of like, um, just, uh, shift a little bit in your weight and all of a sudden with the top hinge being broken, this huge stone door just starts shifting and falling towards you and in your position, you stumble down in front of it and it... God damn it. Right on top of Red <laughs> Ouch. Doors open. I told you to stay away from the fall. <laughs> so, uh, we are gonna roll two d six damage for that. I'm taking old tick damage today, apparently. <laughs> Sorry. Y'all deserve is, that. No, this is just how D, this is how the DM's going to counter me just surviving all his poison. It's just me taking tick damage. <laughs> More doors fall on my tool. After the door falls on him, I would. I'm gonna bend down and start trying to lift it up off his back and help. And Bresnik. Thor falls down so hard he breaks both of his legs. <laughs> as this um, door does uh, fall down, Bresnik, as you look over, uh, you look up and you see uh, the keystone uh, in the archway. You see as this thing had kind of scraped open, a little faceplate kind of swung down, and you see a small little hole, just about the perfect size for a shepherd's crook. Oh. <laughs> So that was the key. <laughs> the key. See, that was right. I knew that keyhole was important. Damn it. Key, I, thought, I, thought was, I literally thought this puzzle was like, no, that it's just trying to hear to trap you here as long as possible. I knew you know, it. It's like there was no solution, so the only way through was force. Nope. There, no, there was a sophisticated solution. It's just that we are a team full of hammers. <laughs> hey, 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 remember? I'm. I'm. I the, tried to finish it. I'm supposed he to be did. He one. just didn't quite roll high enough. That was the issue there. I was like, "Oh, these solutions got. They're just trying to trick us here." And he's laughing at us for doing these investigation checks because there is nothing to investigate. There was no, the okay. DC. I it was to do with the. You guys are getting higher levels, so the DCs are going to raise. Gotcha. No, it was just like, oh yeah, it's obviously a trap here. It's but it's a psychological trap, not a physical trap. Oh, that's. I thought it had something to do with <laughs> putting the figurines in the door. That's the whole dungeon, my friend. That's the whole dungeon, not just the first one. <laughs> but y'all, y'all got what you deserve for being savage. It's okay. <laughs> Actually, hey, it, is. Hey, I tried, it was I just tried red to tool, like to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, my tool sort of got what. He, I mean, Rattool really didn't get what he deserved, but I mean. See, so look at him backpedaling now. He talks shit to the big guy. <laughs> He's instantly backpedaling. <laughs> Yeah. What you all get for while relying on foot keys? <laughs> careful, be careful what you say while you're within. What uh, just? Oh man, distance. Gibbs, you're ridiculous. She just gave everybody inspiration, twenty dollar donation. Every the whole team is going to get inspiration. I'm assuming that there's. Gibbs, I accept being crushed by a door now. <laughs> I'm being so, crushed by a door I believe now that that's. I got it. The ten dollar level is actually the uh is that group initiative? Is that what I wrote on there? You'll have to scroll down on the page itself. I don't have the page open. 
But that means there could also be some dice rolls in there. Unless you want to give the team inspiration and give me the dice roll. That would be pretty cool. Hello, give us <laughs> Whole team and DM. Bam! Right, well, more dice rolls for me, suckers. So go ahead and add another inspiration for each of you as a character. I and believe that means. I'm excited to see when Gibbs gets a chance to play with us. I believe that gives me a D10, a second D10 to alter any dice yeah. roll of my choosing. A D10, that's a big number you can change. Wait until someone has to roll another wisdom save. <laughs> except, except one. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that's what that's exactly what I'm planning. It's just I roll really high. It's like two off. It's like two off. DM rolls, just rolls a one. And I still pass. God, that's gonna piss me off so fucking bad. <laughs> you have no idea. This guy will not fail a wisdom save against my attempts to mind control him, and it's I, frustrating. I don't even have wisdom save. I think mean, at this point, since everyone tries to mind control Ratul, we need to get something that prevents him from mind control. <laughs> yes, yeah. saves him from charming. Like ring of mind children. Gibbs said uh, she wants know. to play in all caps. I see you, Gibbs. We're gonna figure that out. It'd be fun. That would be fun. Actually, yeah. Let's make that a big goal. If Gibbs keeps, if Gibbs gives us enough, let's give her a special guest episode. Yeah. So, uh, she uh, she's earned that beyond already. I yeah. Believe. Every three we'll, we'll, find, we'll find a week and you can join us. Gibbs episode or riot. Gibbs episode, right? Are there any one shot adventures we could just do? Could do that. We can, we can figure something out. Every week is a one shot adventure with this team. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Ratul kind of flexes, does the push up, uh, Drek does come over, help him kind of shove this giant stone door to the side as Rafiki kind of moves out of the way, I assume. Um, you guys do manage yes. to get this door off of uh, your big green friend. And you see this hallway stretching before you. Did we beat the first puzzle? Okay, I'm happy. The first puzzle we, is only took us two episodes. One adventure. The, the first puzzle <laughs> using I mean, the one and a half. You know, we did it. We're, we're smart people. Exactly. We just spent all this time <laughs> trying to figure out how to store We just <laughs> anyway. Let's go through the door into the hallway. Go, go, go. Yeah, let's hurry. Get out of here. Well, like... even if we even if we hurry, we need to watch our feet. Well, yes. I mean, sure. You can watch your sixes. Or, no, I why can't you guys go in the hallway? So, you know, like, watch your line. step. It's dark. I know. I mean, I guess when tomorrow comes through, it won't be dark. But point yeah. is, is still watch globe. your feet. And the drift globe you see is not the drift globe you we you saw when we when we uh, left the when we, when we were like. Sits, uh, is hanging out around the city. It, it looks different. Um, runes happen to be inscribed in it, and uh, has some stuff that you, you, you that looks very different. A uh, little ornate uh, attachments as well. Mm. Okay, I'm so making magitek over here. That's true. Okay, so. As you guys start making your way through this door, um, let me go ahead and uh, let's do a, a quick break. I'm sorry, I have to go to the bathroom super bad. Um, uh. Let's take a, a quick uh, two and two, and then uh, we'll be back and we will uh, figure out what's next coming up here. Be right back, guys. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
We're back. We did. Let's go ahead. I also had to grab my tasty chicken sandwich because foods for this guy. All right. Um. <laughs> I know, Gibbs. There will be no challenge unaccepted in the land of Gibbs. All right. So, uh, who else is gonna kind of make their way? I'm gonna make my way. Actually, I'm gonna send my drift globe uh, 20 feet ahead of me for now. Okay. Um, so that it's like I'll I'll gonna give it to not give it to, but I'm gonna have it like ahead of me so I can it lights my way without having to be it right next to me. So let me see if I can separate myself. How do I separate myself? In the dark, won't that essentially blind you from 20 feet away? See, so just huh? zip through the doorway. No, it's a great dim light for. Uh, you can change the radius of the light and the color of yeah. that light uh, let, at will. Let me... <clears throat> and pull that up. Give me a second. Okay. Just so everyone can see the ability of it. Just gonna walk in because I have no fear and I want to get out of this place, man. Everything's topsy turvy. You just got here. So yeah, this is but a very like, nation thing. Like, Catman is like being a god or something. Like, Maybe I'll keep it I think Doc's just jealous. I think people are crazy here, man. It's like, I don't even want to worship god, like though. this. <laughs> crazy guy who talks to trees. What? Uh, I'm not the Technically, really this drift boat could do some very interesting. <laughs> Rasnick, you're about to be up. We need you to keep an eye on the ground ahead of us. <laughs> no, you're fine. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have the drift globe. If I can just select it. I'm gonna have it go right here. Just to see if it helps anyone see anything farther. There's doors up there. Um, actually, I have to read the wording of a spell. Oh, I could just walk through the door myself. Yeah. I know I felt that. Uh, that's a new one. You still have a, you, could, you still have a familiar, right? Can you send him up to check things out for us? You mean like, Jeff? Uh, yeah, I was saying I Doc. All the way you still the have a familiar. I, as, this was a player, obviously I could say. I'm gonna ask Jot. Jot, can you can you go forward and check for us what's up ahead? Yeah, he's his own independent person. <laughs> well, he's a strong independent. He is. All right, and uh, you see Zigzag kind of. Uh, I think they have natural climbing, don't they? Right. Uh, yes. Background. You see him just kind of walking around uh, the walls here, um, kind of above you guys. He just kind of sticks into the wall and kind of walks around the corner. You know, he kind of looks down the hallway, looks back at you guys. Uh, no, I'm eating sun chips. <clears throat> um, let's see, pressure detection. Where is Jot? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what the, the little guy's uh, saying over here is, but, uh, I, uh, you, you just want me to go down here and just like checks it out or something? Yeah, can you just make sure there are no? Can you look around and see if there's any traps up ahead on, and if if uh, you can see anything that we might not be able to? Oh yeah, like, sure. All of a sudden, I'm like your familiars and stuff. You got your little light bulbs over there. Once you have that goes down and do the things, you know, you don't even want me to be your familiars, you know. But now you're just gonna try and tells me what to do and stuff, it's like. Well, this, I I would have potentially chosen you. Oh yeah, potentially, uh, potentially my ass. All right, yeah. Let me go ahead and check this out <laughs> down here. All right. You can't be two people's familiars. It's not how it works. Yeah. Somebody's gonna get worked over here. I mean, Mara, what are you trying to, like, say? You were gonna make him, like, your side familiar or something? Like, what the hell was that? What? Yeah, I ain't, that? No, I ain't no two-time and familiars. <laughs> Unless you want to pay me more and get rid of the light bulb. <clears throat> um, what? What? 
have some Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm down here. I'm looking at stuff, boss. Don't worry about it. Have some dignity, chat. Come on. <laughs> You're no side familiar. Come on. Jeez. That's true. He's bound to you by, by your spell. He just obeys me because I request him to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you guys... Uh, yeah, flop down to the end of this hallway. Was there anything you wanted him to do? Cook? Um, Are you looking I guess I can look through Jot's eyes, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That... Just, yeah. Uh, Meditate. You can see that Find the stone here. walls of this corridor are carved to resemble a stack of bamboo-like logs. The passage slopes down from the single door on its western leg, the lintel of which has been crafted to represent a stylized cavern entrance. It leads to a uh, leads to double doors of beaten bronze, worked to resemble a forest of seaweed. And this is where Jod is standing in front of these double doors. And you can see that uh -huh. they are these very large bronze doors. Oh, hey, more doors. Like very large bronze doors. Some more doors, but I don't see any trap eyes. Uh, roll investigation. I would, I would still be more comfortable. Classic. I will roll investigation, which I'm not going to call that I'm going to roll a one, so I don't. Why would you do that? Oh, the three is two away from one. But it's not a one. Okay. That'd be... Uh, that was... He was using Jod's senses, so... Or he was looking through Jod's senses, so... That's fine. Is, or, is, does Jod have, uh... I know this gets sound really bad. Does he have more intelligence than I do? Because I have... <laughs> I'm a zero. Uh... <laughs> I mean... No. Okay. About the same. That's that's good. Yeah. There we go. Okay. That's good. So, saying as everybody wants me to do it, I'm going to call Jad to do it. So, I'm going to go ahead and slow them to the front of the group and just inspect the area in front of us. Walls and floors included. Okay. Real perception. All looking for traps. Does this count for mechanisms? Uh, yeah, mine's all, it has to be a walk through. Is it automatically... I haven't added anything right Well, you have the dragon mark thing, right? Yeah. Um, perception you said, right? Yeah. I'm using my advantage, the answer I can Yeah, why not? Nice. Okay. Um, as you start advancing down this hallway, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! You rolled twice for that frog. You rolled mm -hmm, that one both times. <clears throat> the frog is not very perceptive. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that, okay? Uh, yeah. So as um, you're kind of uh, looking down, are you advancing down the hallway as you go? Yes, I'm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So you get to about here, um, about even uh, with this frog man, and you see him crawling forward, and right as he's about to step here. You see, you suddenly notice this seam in the walls um, of this hallway where the bamboo-like logs uh, kind of meet up with another one. And on all the other ones, you could see that it almost seemed like they were kind of overlapped a little bit. But right here, it seems like all of these logs kind of end in the same spot. 
at this one particular juncture. And you see him reaching out, just about to put his hand on this spot. Trying to go ahead and yank him back. And just leave this because I said this when we very began this adventure. I am wearing gloves, so there's no skin contact with the frog. (laughs) (laughs) I've I've made sure to mention that a few times in our adventures, (laughs) Jasnik wears gloves. Razzik does not want to get frog warts. So no, its skin, poison, its skin is like a, a poisonous, or is it paras- paralytic? Oh, jeez. Gibbs, you're killing me. She just Paris. donated another $10, and this time for dice and luck for Gok. <laughs> Money bags over here. So, Gok, <laughs> you have another inspiration, and you Good. are going to get... Um, I believe a d6. I don't have to look that up. A d6 luck die to help you with your... That you can use on any dice roll at any time. You'll have a d6 available. We're about to say my infamous infamous Wait, one. Was you? It was a 10 bucks? I didn't even have to finish that sentence. Yes. <laughs> 10 bucks is a d12. Uh, well, she wanted uh, inspiration and a dice roll. Oh, okay. Inspiration by herself. Ooh, I like that. Emma, you're right. Uh, it's a inspiration in a D6. I think that's what it's set up. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there, there Save. you go, Guck. Congratulations you. to you, sir. And thank you, Gibbs, for, uh, for yes, helping out. Thank you out. very much. I will and, try uh, not to disappoint you, but I've got to tell you, here. I'm going to disappoint you probably. <laughs> there is Guck, even when you roll low and you roll your natural ones, you are helping out because your entertainment value of what you do for this party is beyond measure. <laughs> and we all appreciate you for your contribution. There you I go. will eventually buy your cloud makers. Gok's gonna have a full jester costume one day. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, his crown is not a jester's crown, it's a count crown of the king. <clears throat> yeah, it's called a dragon. It's from a dragon. I yeah. mean, you could crown just of- attach some of those dangly things off of it. If Gibbs donates yeah. enough, she can have a story-driven, game-altering event happen. And she turned my tabaxi blue once, so I'm just saying she would very likely put you in a jester costume and have no fucks given. Just throwing that. Oh out. no! Gods <laughs> become hot pink. Go! Oh, don't not give that idea. She right could now. turn you hot pink. We, we, we will nickname him Care Bear. <laughs> we <laughs> got Care Bear. Oh wait, no, better yet, we make Jot pink. Big Gok pink. <laughs> so pink why pink. are we turning this on me, first of all? <laughs> John to a, turn Jot into a beanie baby. Uh, and oh, it God. changes its alignment. If you right. turn oh, Jot no. into a stuffed animal, I am just going to rage quit. <laughs> I mean, if we, really, if, we, if we really wanted to do it, we could just turn Gok into a Teletubby. Oh, Forever God. Jot is a fluffy bunny. Alright, let's... Let's get back to seriousness. Brassnick <laughs> you know, pulling zigzag away from certain doom. I mean, she asked how much is that, so any one of those options could be on the table right now. I'm just... Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. You guys get craziest ideas. For uh, I mean, a pink goblin <laughs> would be pretty awesome. Just... Uh, it'd be very interesting. This <laughs> patron goblin. would disown him. I... My demon patron, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't be the first pink goblin because I've been in a campaign where I was an optimist and turned my goblin pink. Mm-hmm. We'll see, it's already well, been you done. Go. You can't do it again, it's already been done. It's gotta be oh. magenta instead of pink. Uh, and gog into a unicorn. She just asked if she could turn you into a unicorn, so. How would I. I would, how, how would I. A demonic. Oh, kind of Demon unicorn. I mean, Man. you could just be a goblin with a unicorn horn sticking out of your forehead. Oh. That, that's it? I don't actually become. You'd be like a, a goblin with a horse tail. I'd be a goblin horn. Okay. You would then at that and point be a goblin horn. Your very, your very first legendary very creature. Very first of its kind creature. <laughs> I mean, in your, fa- in your favor, Gawk. You'd be the most you'd be the most notorious boss in, goblin boss in all of history. If you had a unicorn oh, horn and a dragon tooth crown, you'd be the most epic goblin ever. 
and Obsidian it would scale. Would be his Archfey patron fighting his gob or patron. I feel Actually, like we're yeah. building a demigod here. I mean, yeah, you have your <laughs> you have your crown of dragon teeth. Plus, if you get the unicorn horn, you basically will demand respect from any goblin you come across. You literally would look like basically the proverbial goblin king. And if they there like laugh at you, you could just stab them with your forehead. Or you know, you could just blast them with a, a bolt of other energy like, oh, yeah, just through just their out. body. Yeah, the goblin <laughs> laughs at you, and you just fireball them. Anyone else want to take a laugh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyhow, fireball probably would be the better solution than stabbing them with your face. But I'm just saying, it would be funny. It'd be pretty metal. Just awesome. do the water boy at him. I mean, thank you stick so the him and then Eldritch blast out the horn while it's inside so the person. Gives. Holy crap! Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me right now, Gibbs? Oh shit! Oh my goodness! Wait, what happened? I can't actually know. She just donated know. 50 freaking dollars and she wants to turn you oh. into a unicorn. Oh my freaking god. Are you kidding me right now? Oh. Is this a I'm, thing that's happening? I guess I'm a unicorn. Not right you, now. Okay, no. so Gibbs, you can make any game altering decision, any choice that can alter the story in any way, shape, or form that you would like to do right now. Oh no. Oh, it it no. could be affecting a bad guy. It could be a major story turn development. It could be something from a backstory coming back to haunt these guys. It could be a unicorn horn sprouting from the head of our resident goblin. I, you know, it's a lot of power. Literally anything that you would like to do to change the story. Oh no, we just basically fifty dollars is equal to wish. She gets a wish. Pretty much. And she so, wished so, upon a while twist. she contemplates that option. <laughs> wow, you're I'll blowing my freaking wish. mind right now. Thank you so much, Gibbs. I can't even freaking appreciate you enough. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thanks, Gibbs. It's a lot. It means a lot. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm like stumped over here. Believed um, it in reality. <laughs> so, Brasnick, as you reach out and you grab this little frogman and you pull him back, <clears throat> as you point out uh, the seams of this thing, as you start looking at it closer, you definitely realize that on both walls that there is this seam coming down right here. And as you look down at the floor, you notice in this 10 foot square here that it seems to be slightly different than the rest of the stone in the hallway. Just just the slightest of depressions that if you weren't looking for, you wouldn't notice. But, you know, being a dwarf and be, having that her, uh, heritage and, and knowledge of stonework, you can see that there seems to be some sort of a depression and a trigger plate in the floor of this hallway. You gonna take a closer look at that? Mm hmm. Not to do as the rogue does. Disarm traps. <laughs> do you also, risk spray rogue? traps? Yeah. So, are you investigating the gunner? Yeah. It's normal. 18. Um, it does look like it can be, uh,. Probably blocked um, with some uh, pythons or some uh, similarly strong shims in a way to make it so that it can't be depressed uh, by the weight of people on top of it. Um, or possibly if it is triggered already, you might be able to use, uh, again, pythons or shims of some kind to keep it triggered. Anyone have pythons? I think an adventurer's pack should come with them if you have one. No, just I used all my pythons in the last one. And you barricaded a door. <clears throat> so, anyone else have pythons? I don't think I have my pack. Hi, be that way. I pull out a dagger. I pull like two, two daggers. Oh, listen, can I jam a javelin in there? Or would that do it? 
<clears throat> I'll, I'll use my daggers. Let's use I'm gonna fight this type thing. So not not my magical daggers, but the other daggers I keep on me. I'll use those. My normal daggers. You can always like you don't have to use long. You have like two. I have two. Okay. I'll give them to Brez. Okay. Yeah. You feel like you should be able to do the job with it. Right. You're gonna try and, and hammer these in place with the trap unsprung. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and have you roll a um, dexterity check using thieves' tools. And then, because of your dragon mark, you would be able to add that extra little dice roll to this check. <clears throat> Alright, so in these tools, the extra thing, I think. It's no, it's not in there. It's a D4. Can I actually add it? Yep, roll. Oh, you don't get to add it to this? No, I do. I just have, have the man in the world to be for. Okay. Uh, that so is 25. plenty, and you are able to uh, get uh, go ahead and get these two pythons into place, and you d feel confident uh, that you have uh, successfully blocked this pressure point. On the ball. Okay. All right, it's safe to pass. Well, there we go. It worked out okay in the end, because I looked at my inventory. A good player. Good job, Doc. <laughs> Almost gonna be a dang black. Ha! I tricked you! No, I'm kidding. Good job. <laughs> yeah, you tricked me into using <laughs> King Unicorn. Ah, oh, man. Is that gonna be it? Freaking King Unicorn into the man. <laughs> Uh, she said she is having a tough time with this decision, and I told her she wanted to, to go ahead and PM me, so um, we may not get a decision on that tonight, but I like calling you Keen Unicorn already because it's funny. So. Oh, no. Here's that. Oh. Wait, we create, we Team Unicorn now? That was... No, oh King. My God. King. Oh, I'm King I'm Unicorn. King Goblicorn. King Goblicorn. So as long as we become the king of some, I'm going to feel very fulfilled. You got the crown already. You're already king. It's whether or not you <laughs> turn into a goblicorn is the question. That is true. That is You're going to become true. your own race, your own mythical gonna be creature. Progenitor. <laughs> what if you get? Don't unicorns get their powers from the horn? I mean, would that mean that you did all their magic? All their magic is stored in their horn. Would that not mean that horn. you get You're some kind of that. power from this? I mean. Honestly, I feel like he might learn a new language just because of this new mutation that apparently he just earned. Are you going to be a fey goblin? I didn't earn, it was bought. <laughs> and it's both. It's bought by patrons on the other side. It's true. <laughs> it's, okay. it's us gods playing around with him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, not us, because we're not gods, but... And the gods gives... are clearly interested in this little goblin. And he has become a central piece of this story already. I knew I was destined for greatness from the first day I played this game. No. That's true. I mean, I the one thing I, the one thought I can't stray away from, though, is if this does happen, if you ever have children, are they also going to have unicorn horns? Uh, they'd probably be like really small. Is that how it works? Skin will do to it. <laughs> I figured it would just be a, a, a solely him thing because it was a mutation. What? No, you can okay, pass it on. whatever mutation My I want gosh, to. What have I started? Yes. Mutation, yeah. you pass it on. Gives, probably just Daryl. Gives. If you choose the unicorn, then we you can choose the power, but we will talk about those options in uh, in Discord. Wouldn't that make Gawkus a real set of goblin? He'd be a fae. Oh wait, I'd no, they're a... celestials, aren't they? They're celestials. Yes. <laughs> It'd be a celestial. It'd be a celestial. So goblin. he's gonna be a celestial with a demonic patron. This is my That's fan right. fiction come to life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's 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 a oh god, what are they called? Nephilim. A nephilim, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, my Diablo dreams real. He's, he's also technically a tiefling, so he's a nephilim. A nephilim. 
Yeah. Um, so that eam at the end actually is just denoting a plural. Anyhow, what's going on with the door in front of us? <laughs> yeah, let's figure out what. Uh, I feel like I figured out what this new goblin is is a major thing right now. All right, so you guys do have yeah, these gigantic door door. bronze doors in front of you. This is why it takes us a year and a half to get through a dungeon. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, it was too dangerous. Got yeah, easily distracted. Um, Come on, we guys. Do... We spent like we spent like ten minutes in this hallway. Let's actually open the door. Let's open this door, guys. There is a time crunch in this dungeon. Next door. Year. This one. Or us goofing around isn't relative to time in game. It's like the pause button. It's the pause button. <laughs> the pause button has been triggered. So you guys do see these giant bronze doors in front of you, next to Druk and Jot. Here, uh, you see Jot kind of fly back and out of the way as you guys come closer. What would you like to do? Does it does it seem locked? Um, are you gonna try? I mean if it there's no, I'm not gonna if there's like looks like there's a switch or something to depress on it, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna does it look like there's something to press to open there or is it just like a, a handle to pull the door open? It just looks like handles. I would just grab, check the handle and just check it. Not like try to open the door, but check it and see if it's locked. It starts to slide open. Okay, well, it's not locked. It does seem to open? have some resistance to it. And as you start to slide it open a little bit, you can see almost like a, a very <clears throat> wet, um, mud like, almost like a silt, like a very wet silt kind of. It's Kind of ooze out under the door in the crack. Okay. So did it slide open enough for me to see, or just like I just tested the door? Just testing it. And something seemed to come up from underneath it. There's so something nice. on the other side of this door. As I point out the fluid and stuff, what does it let stuff look like? So, like like if you were to reach down in a riverbed and just pick up the earth there as it would just kind of like, you know, just run out of your hand like really, really wet earth, like silt up a river, riverbed almost. How tall is the roof in this hallway? Um, that is a fine question. So... Most of the hallways have 20 foot ceilings, um, and the rooms are going to be variable from 20 to 40 feet in height. Oh, so they got vaulted okay. ceilings. So I will go to open the door and be prepared if something's on the other side of it to leap to the roof out of the way. Okay. And then I'm just going to open the door. All right. So as you open the doors the rest of the way, you know, a bunch of silt and sediment uh, starts pushing the doors open uh, completely, um, just from the weight of the mud itself. So those of you in front um, are going to see this. And as these doors do kind of slam open against these walls you suddenly see this creature and let me go ahead oh. <laughs> and you can see that this room is constructed of large stone blocks betrayed in the corners the walls are wet and slimy and mud covers most of the floor in a thin coating to the east and west may be seen stone doors recessed in the wall, and to the north, a set of stairs leads down. In the center of the chamber sits a large polished boulder amid a pile of smaller, rounded rocks. The boulder is five feet tall and colored brown with dark streaks and spots. Leaning against it is what appears to be a bamboo staff. In the mud around the base of the boulder is a moving shape looking like a crayfish. It is facing you. It seems to be aware of your presence. <clears throat> and as 
these doors slam open as you guys come into or you know view you suddenly hear who is this actually the only one that understands this is going to be Rafiki well actually I forgot Rafiki you got a bunch of followers down here don't you did they follow us they yeah, did. I just did. I, I meant to ask what <laughs> happened with all of them. <laughs> they he definitely doesn't care about them at all, but they've been following me. Been following them. Oh. And I don't push back. It's very sad. Fiki has no want worth. So he's like, whatever. He's walking away from. Uh, so they would have heard this as well. Um. Uh, but Rafiki, you do hear this. The rest of you guys hear this language that you have heard uh, from some of these tribal members. Uh, you heard Rafiki uh, talking to them in this language, and uh, he had explained to you that this is the Olman language, and it was used by um, the, the people of the Mesoamerican um, era uh, of this language. I guess it's not technically Mesoamerican because that's our world, but still. You know what I mean. It's from that <laughs> sort of a setting. So, anyway, um, so uh, Rafiki, you hear this, you understand this language. The rest of you do not. Um, you guys aren't really sure about Zigzag and what what languages he knows. He uh, upon hearing the voice, I would draw my weapon at the very least. Okay. Considering where we are. <clears throat> so Rafiki, you hear, who is this? Who dares enter the chamber of the guardian? You had better go, or I'll have to discharge my sacred duty. Be off with you before I lose my temper. And after a moment, you see another form kind of shift over to the side. And you see this other giant crayfish kind of come up out of the ground. And Rafiki, you suddenly hear, Oh, oh I thought you were going to let me say it this time, Bill. And you see the first crayfish kind of stop and look over at the other one and just says, Shh, I'm busy here. But, but Bill, you said it would be my turn and it's been so long. How come you always get to say the thing? You never let me do it. And the rest of you just kind of hear this kind of chittering language between these two creatures. And the first one stops and he looks back at the other one again. And says, I'm trying to do me job here. He looks back at the rest of you. Kind of just gonna look at Rafiki. Look. What, what, what are they saying? <laughs> Rafiki's just laughing. You guys are so intimidating. You did a good job. But my name's Rafiki. My friend. We mean you no harm. We are trapped in. Oi. Coming look. down here, you've come to the wrong place. I agree. We're in the wrong. But we are here after let us um, maybe I get to pet one of you <laughs> and you're saying this in uh, in the language you're speaking to me in Olman. Olman okay so as you're saying this you see Zigzag kind of comes into the room and he comes around the corner and you see him jump up onto the wall here <laughs> and uh, after a moment, you see him jump back down off of the wall, and you see him, like, shaking his hand. And he's like, looks back up at the wall, and he shakes his hand again. What's on the wall? I don't know. But apparently you can't stick to. Well, I'm looking right next to it. I'm standing right next to a wall. But if I, I see him, like, recoil, I'd look at the wall. Roll investigation. Okay. Um, you can see that the uh, um, the surface of this wall, uh, the uh, the structure itself, seems to be made of limestone, and you can tell that there seems to be some sort of reaction happening with the wetness in this ancient limestone that seems to be creating almost like an acidic 
texture into the walls themselves. Okay. I mean, I can't really interact with the creatures. I can figure that out and just mm -hmm. be like, the parents, I guess, looking at by the walls of the city could something. <laughs> There is no blaming you for anything. You're good to go, Gibbs. <laughs> um, okay, so this is just something that you noticed. And you see him actually kind of rubbing his hands uh, through uh, the silt. And seems to be kind of like trying to get the substance off of, off of his fingers. I'll offer my water skin a little bit to pour it off. Okay. All right. Um, so... I guess while Rafiki's talking to them. <laughs> okay. See if they agree to let us pass. Um, you see that uh, they do seem to be kind of taking a defensive posture uh, in front of this giant boulder here. And uh, <clears throat> after you uh, asked to pass, um, you, you see them, they, they kind of stop and start talking to each other. And the first one's like, Whoa. We shouldn't let anybody pass. It's our sacred duty to guard this place. Oh, but oh, well, they seem so nice. Bill, maybe we could just let them pass this one time. Well, we can't let anybody pass. Have you forgotten your duty? Been here for thousands of years, and it seems like you're just a, a wee pup again. Oh, come on, Bill. They seem to be awfully nice. They can't hurt anything down here. We're just trying to get out, yeah? I will... I will offer them dried... Dried fish? Yeah, my ration. We're all dried fish fruit. Okay. Um, what do you think a cat eats? <laughs> okay. Go ahead and roll persuasion. You have rolled this ever. Oh, oh. nice. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Yeah. So far, every time I do the animal, I crit. <laughs> okay. Um, so as you step Cold forward, right. what what do you say as you're holding out this dried fish to these giant crayfish? <laughs> My friends, if you're hungry, dried fish, if you eat it. Oh, well, see it there. Look at him. He's got a nice little snack for us. He can't be that bad of a bloke. Come on, we could just let him pass, can't we? Oh, always thinking with your stomach. You can't ever just do your job without thinking of your stomach. It's always got to be the first thing. Someone comes along with the little fish and... Well, I mean, it, well, it, it, it does smell rather nice, but, you know, we, we have a job here, and we can't just be, you know, not doing that. Oh, come on, Bill. You know you haven't had some nice fish in such a long time. Let's just go ahead and say yes to this, huh? Ah. Uh, all right, you know. All right, let me let me see. Just let me see the fish. And you see him just kind of like an extra one. Okay. He kind of scuttles a little bit closer to you. You're gonna step forward, and Jarek, you see this giant crayfish kind of scuttling closer to the two of you. You see this claw, almost as you know that could easily crush your head. Yeah, I've, got, I've just got my, stat, my, my spear at the ready at my side. Like I said, I drew it. I didn't put it away, but I don't have it pointed at them or in a defensive posture, but I'm eyeing them as he gets close. Okay. Or if he seems to be talking with them and things don't seem to be going bad, I don't understand what they're saying, but... <laughs> All right. So as you, um, as you kind of reach out, you, d you just, like, hand a, a parcel of this dried fish... Yeah, well, I'll take it out of the parcel. Take it open. Like, okay. right. All right. And you see him kind of, uh, you see this creature kind of grab it, uh, some of it with the tip of his claw, and, like, brings it up. See it kind of, like, you know, the mandibles kind of come out and start, like, tasting at it, and you see him just, <laughs> just starts eating it, and you see them, oh, 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 they'll give us some. Don't, don't take it all. And you see the first, oh, oh, yes, you know, I mean, of course you're going to be able to have it. And he, like, takes in a little bit more, like, eats a little bit more. But, oh, no, Bill, you're eating it. Oh, 
and you see the, the second one come in, try and take some of it, and uh, they end up kind of like sharing the bit of it between the two of them, kind of just devouring this bit of dried fish. And as they're doing so, suddenly behind them, you see in the center of this room, this boulder suddenly and you see this bamboo staff that seemed to be kind of leaning up against it suddenly moves and it and you see another one and then all of a sudden you see these other huge leg-like extensions and suddenly you see this boulder rising up off of the That's ground behind these two crayfish. And as it turns as around, it... you suddenly see these two claws <laughs> come out on the ground as you see the largest hermit crab that you've ever seen in your lives turn around. And as it kind of shakes itself, it says, Well, is it dinner time then? Would you like some fish too? What have we brought for Kalkala? Ride and roll? Is it a treat? What have they brought, like my pets, for Kalkakala? Well, they got these, you know, they got these, like, nice, nice little fish bites here, you know, and it's just, it's just it's really yummy, and, uh, well, I mean, there's not really enough to, to share with you, boss. I guess we, I guess we kind of ate it all. Well, you ate it all, Bill. You barely even gave me none of it. You just hogged it all to yourself. Why are you trying to get me in trouble? Well, I mean, you know, it's we weird charity. What are you trying to accuse me of over here? And you see this crab kind of watching the two of them, looking back and forth. Finally looks back at you, Rafiki, just kind of cocks its giant crab-like head to the side a little bit. Well, have you got a treat for me then, darling? Sure, sure, sure. So I'll open up the other ration. If it... Okay. I was just gonna be eyeing Rafiki, what's going on? <laughs> oh, I, none of the rest I, of you I, this, have uh, understood any single bit of what is yeah, going on. Yeah, no, no, all I've been hearing is just click, click, click. I'm just looking at Rafiki like, <laughs> what are they saying? You fed them and now there seem to be more clicking on you. What's going on? Can I, I walk in on this stuff right now? I don't even know. I can't even. What is yeah, it? I, the rest of us probably walk in at this point. I mean, there's not enough room for y'all to walk in. We're kind of oh, jumping up it? into the door. So kind of uh, just here at the doorway so far. As Kalka Kyla kind of starts moving forward, uh, the rest of you guys uh, are able to kind of join the party here. Uh, Mara, as you come in, um, you do, you know, obviously see these giant creatures. Um, these tribesmen behind you kind of in the doorway are just kind of like, you know, looking very uh, shocked and in awe of this situation, and they kind of start bowing and scraping uh, before this crab-like creature. And you hear them saying, oh, ka-ka-ka, ka 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 And they seem to be kind of like nodding and bowing. And Rafiki, you, uh, upon hearing this, you definitely remember um, your teachings of the ancients and of the greater beings that have existed in this land throughout the ages. And you recognize this name as uh, belonging indeed to one of these ancients that you have been taught to revere. I'm like, oh, I know you, the truth, talk about you. And you see this. Extremely wide. Well, darling. I do like a good compliment. Please, tell me more of what you've heard about me. As this creature comes closer, it reaches out and it grabs this parcel and just very delicately starts unwrapping it in front of you with its ginormous crab-like clothes. 
what I I heard you were really wide. People treat. <sighs> Do they still talk about Kalkakala? Above ground? The Great One, of course. The trees. The tree, trees do speak all the time. There's uh, a tree here I had talked to. Question. I am quite glorious, am I not? Gaze okay. upon my majesty. As this crab kind of like leans backwards and spreads its claws out. I don't know what it's saying, but I feel it's posing. It's, it's posing. Uh, you should all bow. Why don't you bow? <laughs> and bow. you do see these tribal members behind you starting to, to bow before this creature. And Mara, as you're standing there, suddenly you see this drift globe next to you start flickering and starts changing colors a little bit. And you just, you don't hear a voice in your mind. It's more like a feeling that you get from this tiny little drift club. And you're just kind of learning about this thing and, and what it is. And as, as you get this feeling, it's almost like a need to understand. And suddenly this drift goat flies forward and it kind of like, you know, floats around in front of this crab-like creature and it stops and it looks up. It says, well, what's this little bobble? And it suddenly like flashes this white color and then turns back to its yellowish form. And all of a sudden, you can perfectly understand this language that's being spoken. Well, I okay. love all the tongues. Only Mara can, or we all can? Mara can. Oh. Um, you should. Read that Say anything after. You should read that description oh, I, I put on your character sheet. Yes, I had forgotten about that. It's been... There's a lot to keep track of. It's true. It's uh, wow, there's a bunch of stations over here. Um, no idea. I just forgot no about that. Gone. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, these are, like, some big dinners over here. Are we, like, going to get some butters over here? Are we just going to, like, get, you know, like, a little fires going? You know, uh, like, I feel like we could just really... Just have like a nice. Heck, I mean, I could just like Eldritch Blast them right now. Yeah, you know, no, like, like freaking see these no. bastards. No, please yeah. don't. Do what? The answer to everything you beat is not to just kill it. I mean, but, I know Big Guy the... wants to eat its heart over here, and he's totally saying this like just out loud. This is a this is an ancient one. tech. What? Wait, do they do they talk or something? Did you... Yes, they've yeah. been talking this whole time. Wait, do you mean, are they talking as in they talk like how we're talking, or talking as in, you know, the whole train thing, or oh, damn, we should fucking go to the trees and stuff. Um, uh, they talk, just like the trees. Yeah, they I mean, talk. you know, like... Okay, they, let's kill them. They talk, they're talking just, like the trees, they're not they talking talk like you and me. They talk just like the trees. So basically, like, there's just big things that we could just put in some butters and have dinners. Uh, what are we talking about over here? I think that's what we're talking about. It's he said he talks to them like right. trees. Let's boil them up. You know, we get some little uh, butter sauce. You know, it's just tasty. Have you, you never I'm had gonna, crabs dipped in butter? I'm going to like, push. I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to use mage hand. And I'm going to like try and <laughs> cover. Cover John's mouth. He's like, hey, I just want to. 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 By this time, I'm he's right. I mean. Are we gonna listen to the crazy tree guy, or are we going to like make some amazing crab with butt? He seems to be able to communicate. Doc, these are intelligent beings. Oh. Oh. oh Why didn't you tell me that? He just told me talk to him like the trees. I mean, who can trust that? He's a tree guy. Tree. You saw me talk to a tree. It told us where to go. Were you not there for that? I saw you there for that. I, I saw you talk to a tree, you stared at it with your unblinking eyes for five minutes, and then we followed you to this temple. And how do you think I knew where the temple was? I asked the tree. I'm pretty sure you knew that information, and you just wanted to talk to the tree. I... it really... Look, I'm gonna try to be as nice as possible, but that... 
That was the most disturbing thing I ever seen. I've I've never seen somebody just stare at a tree unblinking. Look like they're having a conversation for five minutes straight. Okay, okay ja, got and got got you. Well, you're going on a tangent. <laughs> out of everything, <laughs> no, what gets me is that out of everything you guys have seen through two adventures so far, him talking to a tree is the most terrible thing he's seen so far. <laughs> I'm just playing and, that. and they and they hung out with a druid. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't stare at the trees. I don't. I'm blinking five minutes. And have a conversation with nothing. Gibbs, I, I don't know if there's enough money that you can donate to make Mara sassier. I don't know if that's even possible. I'm just saying. <laughs> I do not respond to them. I, I am I am trying to find a way to respond and be sassy, but oh my god. <laughs> I know. There's so much room for quality commentary right now. <laughs> um Gok Gok Gok, I like uh, Grabeck said you were the funniest one of the So I know you're just joking. <laughs> Sure, I sure. You know what, um, I, Mara, I'm not going to turn him into like crab food with butter because you said they talk like normal people. They are sent to the tree stuff. So I'm and just gonna leave it at that, okay? okay? And perhaps more. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting him. Plan is. What is this crab god doing while he's having this conversation out in the open? <laughs> Probably having a migraine. Just sitting there eating their morsel and just kind of watching. Uh, this Indigo, can you let me know when ten minutes pass? <laughs> okay. No. Um. Great. So, do we have a deal? We can go past? Go past, darling. Where are you trying to go? Why have you hit gone? Why have you come here? We we fell into uh we fell in here. There was this. Uh, we were walking through the jungle, and uh, there was a collapse. We fell in here. I'm so, just a hired guy. This is there to. So you weren't looking for Tamawachan itself then? Well, I mean, we were looking. Uh, but um, I, uh, actually, uh. Yeah. Technically, you can understand with comprehend languages, but you wouldn't be able to speak the open language. So you could respond in common. Let me see. I was looking that up. I, I think I, I was like assuming. Oh, H1, do you understand? Well, yes, darling. Of course I understand you. You're speaking my language. No. They're like. <sighs> The babbling of mortals are nothing to me. I agree. It is nice to see another of our educated kind here. It's nice to see an enlightened one amongst us. These ones are far off. It's not their home. They're ex Clearly do not understand the true power of the world. You see a kind of shake and show a little bit at the so he said, he just, yes, so, "So you understand me, even though I'm not speaking um, your your language." What does the skinny one prattle on about? <sighs> this understands you, but speak your language. Intelligent. That's if you're under for a lesser being. Very. Seem to be out of fish. Dried fruit. Hmm. Not as tasty I'm as meat. I. Nothing. We've had our little parlay and talk. We be on our way. With your blessing. What have you come here for? The servant of the ancient ones. Me? Oh, I'm just a simple guide. And I thought it was old age. Maybe I could speak ancient beings down here like you, which I... But I'm just guiding these. They're hmm. on some type of quest to save the world. Save the world from what, darling? What are you guys trying to save the world from? <laughs> uh, we are attempting to stop the reawakening of the ancient gods. 
I will repeat that back to them. <laughs> like, but he doesn't mean you. Most of the gods you'll find here have already been awake for many eons. Except one. I think there's, I think there's something awake. There's a, evil. There's a specific one uh, that we are trying to stop. We are unsure of its name, but we know there are people here trying to awaken it. You speak of Zotzalaha? Yes. You would waken the dread god. There are individuals here who are attempting to reawaken like, the area. Hmm. Oh, there's already Stop. people in here trying. We are first. We are all here to protect the world from the dread god. None shall awaken him. It is our sacred duty to protect this place. Then our goals align. Do they now, darling? Well, I don't want to see, see the world up, up uh, in a people over someone's desire for mad power that they can't control. In order for the god to be awakened, you must first awaken his lieutenant. Sounds complicated. Have you heard of him? Tokas Poplokas. A great servant. Zotzahara. Zotzalaha. It's one of those two for sure. <laughs> if I brutalize any of these pronunciations, please forgive me because I am not like instructed on Mesoamerican pronunciation. It's lost techniques. in translation. Just saying. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I promise. I wish I understood what was being said instead of one-sided conversations. It's not fair. <laughs> okay, back to crab mode. I need more meat to feast upon. I'm trying to relay as much as I can back into. Uh, I'll also attempt to, because I can actually understand them. Yes, I am yeah, assuming that Rafiki is doing a lot of translating right now for this conversation. And I'm translating the rest to uh, that. DM, have 10 minutes pass for me. Um, I would say it's approaching that, and we're looking at uh, probably about 45 minutes into the first hour in this dungeon. No, I oh, mean, so this room is also gassy. Uh, I mean, uh, 10 minutes for... Oh, okay, so overall time, 45 minutes, but 10 minutes for what I'm about to do. Sure. Okay. If he's been, I guess, relaying it back to and from us too, by the way. Um, you know, like, didn't you guys say that the dagger was sentient? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, and it's something that could he true. be the servant of this god, considering he was forged for this reason? Smart. You wouldn't expect that under all that me metal to find a smart brain in there. Uh, and socially awkward. Far from unintelligent. <laughs> uh, and very self aware, apparently. <laughs> Dang, and, yeah, like, gee. <laughs> oh, I, I know I don't talk well with people. <laughs> uh, this crab is my version of Edna Mode. You're right about that. Uh, so I'm gonna really uh, you know that there's a uh, a dagger that's compelling someone to come here. May this be the lieutenant? We have not heard of uh, a lieutenant. An intelligent dagger, you say? Well, darling, there's something else here, perhaps, that might interest you. Have you heard of the axe, Death Eater? I... Is another of these sentient weapons. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, didn't like, uh... Didn't old, uh, succubus face over there, like that Adalia's bitch, did she say something like some, like, you know, some sentient weapon down here that we were supposed to find or something's? Wait, yeah. do you understand them? 
I'm just been staring no, at this. No, we're relaying this. No, Rafiki's been relaying it. Mar and Rafiki oh. are translating. Gok oh. somehow still is staring at the wall uncomprehendingly. <laughs> what? <laughs> she did. did. A change in his forehead. Um. We were supposed to. I'm trying. Uh, was that in the conversation we had with her? Just out of character. Is this where the conversation we had with her? I had with her after I. Um, after you rescued betrayed the, the party. Yes. Rescued the rest of the, the party. <laughs> Look at him trying to <laughs> gingerly, <laughs> gingerly go around the fact that he betrayed the party. <laughs> it's, been so, it's been so hard to not want to say stuff when she says things as this character. It's just like I wasn't there. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Um. um that was during that conversation. Jot did overhear that, though. He was in that chamber with you guys when uh, she was talking to you about that. And then you also heard uh, the broker talking about uh, this plan as well and uh, trying to get to these weapons before the bad guys do, basically. Um, we did hear of it. It's We have to reach it before, before the dagger does, or it's bearer, to be more precise. Well, that's easy, darling. It's just right over there. And you see this crab-like creature just kind of lazily wave one of her crab-like appendages towards this doorway to the east. Uh, oh. Wow. Seems as though you've come to the right place. We can just go there. You've been so helpful for us. Is there anything you want? Hmm. Well... That was a tasty little treat that we've been given. A nice appetit, but it's made me hungry. Come on. I'm gonna turn to Rafiki. He's like, "Can you get what? Can you can you give him one of the tribesmen?" Right. <laughs> what the fuck, Mara? Yeah, damn. <laughs> Drug looks back at Mara. No, no. I've seen you've brought some friends with you. Perhaps one of them could be. Left behind. He does have the same um, same uh, condition that I have, and I think I think it's quite fair. He's given us so much. I, I mean, I mean, I don't want them following me. Don't dinner. They're just clay people, right? Once again, a moral quandary has beset our heroes. This isn't a moral quandary. We just give it. We just give one of the tribes. It's and so once tiring. again, Mara gives no fucks. <laughs> I, mean, I was gonna say, like you know, this dumb crab. You know, yeah. we'll know the difference. He's Pretty much a mix of Tamato and Edema. You're right about that. You'll sacrifice no life before me. Okay, then I mean, let's just give him the Dragoon then, you know? We just, like, you know, yeah. we could take the armors yeah. and stuff, you know? Like, I'm it's sure some of us could use that spears or something, you know? Just, you know, he's volunteering and stuff, you know? Uh, I'm also against the whole sacrificing random people. I mean, like yeah, come on, guys. Was it? Barely people. And that, as soon as John said that, my, 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 my spear pointed at him. Like, <laughs> we gotta be... Some, like, come on. He, oh, hey, we said hey. he died to like something else, not that we sacrifice him at the first chance we got him. Come on. You need to get all aggro Excuse with the pointy thing. Excuse me, little goblin. Hey, I ain't no goblins, first of all. I'm full fledged demons over here. You don't need to get so pointy with the pointy, alright? You know, just yeah. keep that backs over there. Like, uh, come on, no, I'm no, a goblin. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not sure I pointed at Gok because Gok said something about sacrificing me. He's trying to no. get... Excuse me. So I said we would. Have him here, and if he died, then so be it. But there's nothing in there about we sacrifice for the first chance we got. I mean, maybe they just want to eat one of your hands or something, you know? Maybe they just eat like taking arms. We just cut off one of your arms and feed that to him, and then they just be happy, you know? Yeah, you do know that. Like, it's really awful. It's fine. Right? I'm sure they're more than happy how, to, to, to offer themselves to a higher being. How is that a bad idea? Because then he's gonna be useless to us. If he doesn't okay, have well, an arm. Hold up, hold up, guys. So hold up. Is it actually. Uh, is it a, does it actually want, like, people or is it just want food? Uh, it said that the uh, dried fish that Rafiki had given it was uh, a nice little hors d'oeuvre, but it just made it hungry. And, and Rafiki gave it one ration, right? Okay, I actually gave, like, three rations away. <laughs> but I'm saying to the specific crab. Person oh, just thing one or whatever. Bag, yeah. One ration, one, right? One mm -hmm. 
I mean, I bought a whole bunch of rations because so I thought it was going to be a much larger journey. But can I just give that? Will that work? What kind of rations? They're, it's not fish. I, I have like jerky and not, like typical dwarven rations. Um, right. jerky. So mainly Fine. jerky and heart attack. I would say uh, the jerky would probably be something that might be interesting, but any uh, fruits, vegetables, twigs, nuts, berries, none of that's going to... Just Wait, make sure, because just to mention this, again, I thought this was going to be a long ass journey. I've got like 20 rations, so if I just want to pull out all the jerky parts of like 20 rations, does that work? It would probably be a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 10 yeah, rations I'm going to start pulling out rations. I'm start pulling out rations, just I mean, out of the out of the little pockets I've got, and just like chucking rations out until like it's like fifteen, okay, fifteen rations, and separating it all like fifteen rations worth of jerky. Uh, wait a minute, I have the dwarf something has a gift for, it, for you, and I'm gonna toss out the hub. The what? Does that what? suffice? Um, giant crab thing. What Ooh. did you throw out? <laughs> I drew out that hobgoblin arm, it probably has a lot of maggots in it at this point, but... Oh no! I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you really have a rotting Dill. hobgoblin arm? No, you cooked that up. You took you cooked that up when you went back to the uh, oh, the tavern the oh, first time. Oh, I still have it in my inventory. I should no, get rid of this. No, you guys cooked that. I cooked that thing. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I did not eat that. <laughs> uh... Yeah, oh. Chef Snoot roasted that up with some potatoes and some other nice fixins and made a nice gravy for it. And uh, Raznia was mm. loudly complaining the whole time. Does anyone have to have this dispel great food and water? Uh, no. no. I think you're the only true spellcaster in the entire party. Okay, just ask him. I mean, it's. it's, it's <laughs> just uh, ask for... Sorry, don't know oh, sure. what the well, like, Seriously, I'm, I'm just going to push the jerky forward. All right. I mean, I can... jerky. So as you start pushing out this jerky forward, well, darling, that will suffice. It's, uh, you see this crab-like creature just start uh, collecting all of this jerky. Um, 15 rations worth of jerky. Let's say 10, because yeah. I would imagine it wouldn't just be mostly jerky and a little bit of hard jerky. But that'll that'll work. Or um, yeah. Am. Sorry oh, well. if you spit yeah, mega drink all over your keyboard gifts. That's oh, um, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't actually have it. So think of it that way. I yeah. didn't actually have a disgusting maggot. Just you know, un unspew it from all over your keyboard because yeah, uh, we're retconning that. Don't worry about it. Uh, you don't see me right now, but I'm giving you the thumbs up with a smile. It's okay, man. <laughs> She's crying. She's crying at you, Gok, and it's all your fault. Yeah, I've already disappointed you in the past. I know, she just gave you inspiration. I know, it's literally this session that I'm already disappointing people. Uh, this little <laughs> goblin never ceases to amaze us. Alright, so... Gok, Gok, Brand. Kalka Kyla takes <laughs> this stuff and uh, it moves back to her rock. And uh, you see it kind of toss a couple to the sides to these uh, two giant crayfish who also busily start munching down. Um, uh, how does this whole thing take? Uh, that's probably going to be another five minutes or so, so we're looking at about 50 minutes into the first hour. Uh, okay. So I told him to talk to Okay, so you guys, what are you guys going to do? Um, I'm going to take my ability to re actually speak with animals and just take that to go to the other room. Yeah, it's probably head out. Of Who are you communicating with? Everyone. <laughs> I was planning oh, to talk to the crap, but apparently that got resolved, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the other room. Oh, okay. You mean this one over here with the cursed axe yeah. thing? They said that's the one with the axe. Yeah. No other room. Can't sort of want that axe. And technically, we only spoke to them, and they told us where it was. They didn't tell us if we could go there yet. 
I do a, can I do a delayed or re like not delayed but uh go back and can I can I think about what he was doing and do a sense motive or I think that's what it's called. No, it's called insight. Insight check on him uh, on her. Was it him or her? I couldn't tell. Um, you couldn't really tell. It's kind of androgynous. Oh, it. Um, or was it species of a crab? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just want to insight that them, them saying that it was in that direction. Okay. You haven't asked if this crab identifies as male or female yet. No. <laughs> and the crab's gender. Yeah. Guys, oh. assuming. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll that insight. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it was it was a seven. Okay. Yeah, I definitely fine, can't really get a read I didn't go anywhere. on this crab-like creature. Everybody else, uh, moving on. Uh, yeah, oh cool. wait, there is something I forgot. Chad, can you like teleport back to the inn and maybe like uh, get somebody to heat up that egg? Make sure it's fine. I, you know, already. Uh, I just don't. I just don't want to have a really rotten egg back in in the inn room when uh. all this is over and. Yeah, yeah, teleporting's not really like, you know, like, you know, something I do, boss. You can't. I mean, <laughs> where, you go, I mean, you die, you go to hell, and then you just... He doesn't actually, go to hell. Not really hell, you go to a different demonic plane, but you know what I mean. This. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then I'm kind of stuck down to as you know, and then, you know, until somebody, like, summons me back and stuff, you know, like a nice master. Okay. So what you're telling me is you can't just, like, teleport. I'm probably going no, to No, no, boss. I was stuck in a dungeon for, like, a thousand years. With a troll. Okay. okay. That's not really your fault, it's mine, for assuming things. Uh... That's okay. Very disappointed. It's alright, boss. Um, cool. So you see uh, these tribesmen kind of come in. They're kind of staying close to the wall. Um, you know, obviously fearful of this giant crab-like creature. Uh, but also with some reverence. Understanding that this is indeed one of the ancients. You guys all going to press through this doorway? Mm -hmm. Why not? I yeah, might as well go. But I feel more comfortable with Brad. Okay. Yeah, Where did my drift park go? It's back in this other chamber. That's yeah, fine, I'll get it. Gotcha. Oh, okay, you got it. Drift club. Drift club. And then all of a sudden, all of the humans behind you start dying. Okay. <laughs> Just leave them in the room. Will you watch these guys for us? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you hold on to these humans? All right, so we are going we'll give you to go right. to... You see that the walls of this corridor are wet and slimy. The stucco covering has become saturated with water and is decomposing and sloughing off in spots on the southern wall, exposing the seams of one of the large stone blocks from which this structure is built. Guys, I think there's something, there's a way over here. Excuse me, as I go ahead and foot key. <laughs> Can I kick the door down immediately? That's not exactly what I was going for, but all right. Go ahead and uh, strike at this doorway. I am going to use inspiration for this. <laughs> I will not accept that kind of shit ass roll. There you yeah. go. Okay. Um, you uh, put all of your weight and all of your strength into this thing, and it does not even begin to budge. Now that that didn't work, how about you give me time to inspect it? I open it a different way. 
if we remember a falling door from before, we can tell, you know, let's not try and be savages so quickly. Okay, what well, the master dwarf said, not everything is solved simply with brute force. Yeah, so I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to open this area. I see Zigzag kind of leap down to the uh, the corner there with a few quick hops. Kind of peers around the corner and looks back at the group and says, <clears throat> For the first time, Mara, you understand his words. <laughs> what did he say? And he says, uh, This way is blocked in. Rubble is caved in the, the stairway. Yeah. Uh, Zigzag is saying we can't go this way. It says it's caved in. It's not, it doesn't matter if we move it or not. Yeah. How, how can you just randomly understand them? Uh, it's, it's not random. It's a trick that I had forgotten or wasn't utilized to its fullest. When you, when you have so much on your mind constantly, you forget things sometimes. I think you're trying to say a fancy way of, I forgot this, and, uh, sorry guys, I- I didn't forget I this! It. How dare you imply that! It just slipped my mind! Well, no, I'm not implying it, I'm just telling you right now. I, I think you just forgot, and you're trying to hide it. Shh, jock. Very unbecoming of an elf, you know. Either way, it's a useful trick. Okay. Um, you do see, are you investigating this thing? Okay, so mm -hmm. you see that there is um, definitely a lot of this wet lime around the edges of this. It does look like um, there is a seam here. You could spend some time to clear uh, more of this, um, this wet lime away um, to reveal more of the seams of this block to get a better look at it. Yeah, I'm doing exactly that. Okay. Uh, how are you going to do that? So it was lime, right? Mm hmm It's like a wet lime. Like a stucco that's been soaked. Uh, I pull out my smith tools, and I'm sure within smith tools and all that stuff, I've got something to help me with. Okay. Scraping or... Stone. Some that sort of a, a trowel like object. That would mm -hmm. be more masonry. Would be. I mean, I've got a detailed armor and shit like that before. Also, I, I'm a lockmaker, so I figure I had to have something like that. If not that, I've got magical daggers, so either way. Okay. Pretty sure magical daggers will cut through. Stucco and lime. All right. They're also acidic dragon fang daggers, so. Indeed, and you can tell after working with it for a few moments that this wet lime um, is indeed acidic in itself, and um, even getting bits of it on like non-magical bits of your cloth after a few moments, you can see that it seems to be. Um, almost not, not like instantly eating through it but you can see that it is having some sort of a caustic effect um, to your non-magical bits of cloth that are exposed yeah um, so I'm gonna use my ass resistant dragon thing daggers to get through it I guess okay this shirt right here you can find one you can actually buy one if you want uh, there, uh, if you go to the shop that's listed underneath the uh, the Twitch thing, there's a link to go to the shop and you can buy a t-shirt there. I'm working on a new logo. Cool. This will be the old school retro logo for those of you that already have the gear. The cough, Mitch, cough. <laughs> Mitch is going to be one of the few that, that has the old school. All right. Um, it so, before it was <laughs> oh man, before it was a thing. So, uh, you do reveal this. It, it doesn't look like there's any sort of um, a mechanism. There doesn't look to be like there's any sort of gears or inner workings or anything of that nature. It literally looks like a big, gigantic 
stone plug. Like, um, anyone that has religion as a proficiency, go ahead and roll. Wait, am I training them? Nobody has Let's religion as a proficiency? Oh. Um, Not even the paladin? I, no, no, I do. <laughs> plus eight, so I'm like, why do I get plus eight? It's like, oh, no, I have religion trained. This is not a religious paladin. Uh, this, Paladins aren't necessary. This is, this is that cult background. That's true. Wait, what? Secrets? What secrets? Um, that 16 will be good enough. You can tell that this, um, you know, especially looking around, you can see, like, some inscriptions. Um, uh, this was definitely put in place to not only stop grave robbers and things of that nature, people from getting in, but this plug was put here to stop something from getting out. Question is, do we leave? The, I'm gonna explain that this is, this is here to prevent not just people get, coming in but come, going out as well. Question is, do we leave it? Do we leave it? And hope that they can't get into it and uh, fight off any other protections that are inside, or do we take it and bear the risk? If it's supposed well, to stop something it, from going in or out, that's probably where the axe is. Admittedly, nowhere else there's to go. also a crossroads here. We are where they need to come to. The matter is more of our safety in staying here with those crab things out there that seem to. And be you know the poison gas that per that's around us. Let's just open it. Seriously, we're, we're out of so the amount of time it would have taken to clear out the rest of the seams um, and all of that um, going into this conversation, I'm going to say is going to draw us to the end of that first hour. So I'm going to go ahead and roll uh, 66. And we're going to go Six. in alphabetical order. Uh, this is going to be one dice for each player going in alphabetical order. Oh, I thought it was 66 on all of us. <laughs> no, it's 1d6 per character. So it'd be the first roll's Brasnik, second roll Druk, third roll's Gok, fourth roll's Mara, fifth Rafiki, and sixth Ritual. That and is how much damage you take from this poison that is in the air for the first no, hour. Oh, minus two. Not safe. All right, so I only take six, I only take three because I'm now naturally poison resistant. Let me make sure. Yeah. That was sorry. Did you round down? It's two. No, um, it's a six. Yeah, no yeah, six. I, I got a six. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of Brasnik out of five. Never mind. Brasnik will do take two. Yep. Well, I took. Um. Anybody else? Hmm. What's up? Uh, do we want moving? Do can we can we can we move the door or cut down the door again? Can we break it with like a? Sh oh, we don't have shadow spine. Never mind. Well, I'm yeah. hello. I have fist keys and a foot. Key. Before yeah, before we do the foot key, now that we've cleared it of stuff, I'll, I'll be good. Do we want to get it? That's my question. That was my question. Do we want to go for the item? Yes. <clears throat> uh, behind you, uh, through the doorway, as these um, these humans are kind of coming in behind you, uh, through the doorway, you suddenly see uh, the two uh, commoners that look like they were just regular villages. You see them like clutching at their throats, and suddenly you see them just <laughs> just fall over, dead into the silt. And as soon as they land, That's... dead to the ground, those of you who can still see through the doorway, you see this crayfish immediately turn 
and grab their bodies and pull them towards the center <laughs> of the room. And you see these other creatures turn and descend upon these corpses. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> to why I well, need to go. Shit. When I took, literally the moment I put the one damage off the character, the whole map went black. Really? I just, I was like, 48, 47, and bam, all black. Okay. Can, can you see now? No, the, the, literally. I can see you. I you don't can, know what happened. You can't see you right now? Drops. Try refreshing. Yeah, just try refreshing, I guess. Yeah, no, it was weird. I was like, oh, I lost hit point. I don't know why the women's shirts are more expensive. Oh, Sorry. It's just the map. That... Because that's how shopping works. For some reason, <laughs> women's clothes are always more expensive, even though it's the same fine fucking thing. Shirt. Less. It's my man's shirt. I'm really fine with it. Uh, did it... Is it working now? Uh, it's still loading up the... Okay. Oh, I wonder something just wrong with my roll. You know, it says loading, just says critically. Oh, they try refreshing again or something? Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, yeah, so going back to this, definitely looks like just a big giant stone plug. Um, you do, you know, feel the effects of this poison after spending this first hour in this dungeon. Ouch. Um, it does, uh, I mean, you know, you think possibly with enough combined effort, you might be able to push this plug. All right, work have out the tool. It's not me. I am not strong. In That's fact, why I said drunk. We all know that, Mara. That's why I said drunk. Pretty big man. Hi, kitty. Yep, I just go ahead and just get my gauntlets against the stone wall and just start. Just okay. start pushing. And who's going to help Retool in this effort? I'm helping him. I'll do my own roll. Nope. That's not how it works. Uh, so as Red I mean, Tool we starts, we both can't just roll. Red Tool starts pushing against it, and nothing happens. As Druk leans in, starts pushing against it, still nothing. Anybody else want to try at home? Oh, is this a, is it one of those cases where we have to have a combined strength score? I don't have an answer for that um. question. Does anybody else want to help? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, well, I didn't see anyone. Okay, question. Um, Mine's I'd be willing to take some damage for this, but could I use, like, say, maybe the, the the vault in a unique way? I would just leap against against the back wall and then l launch myself forward into it and try to barrel my way through it? I mean, I really want you to try. I want to see that, too, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> is, and is no one else helping? John really wants you to try. <laughs> Uh, Brooke is gonna, gonna, you gonna use his leg strength. Let's do this. Jot's never gonna let you live this down if you try this. <laughs> do it. Do it, Druck. Do it. Uh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll prop this spear up against the other side of the wall and just try to freaking force it open with my legs. <laughs> Using the, the leaping force of... <laughs> so what, you're trying to like jump against this thing? Uh, it was, I was gonna, I was gonna pretty much. And it's a five foot wall. Get right up here, uh, against the back of the, or, uh, the, the the wall here, and then launch myself with a shoulder charge off the leap into it. Okay. So you see this dragoon kind of get back, and you see him kind of get down into his crouch, and like, um, you've seen him do this one time before, but it was in the midst of battle, so you didn't really get a good look at this process, and almost like. 
in the later Superman movies, when he like gets down and he's ready to, to like take off, you can almost see the ground like moving around him, like the air just swirling, little pebbles like lifting up off the stone as Superman's about to leap. It almost looks like that when this dragoon gets down in his crouch. And you see this this built up energy, this inertia energy just building up within his form. And suddenly, just like a rocket, he just explodes out of his crouch and you hear this pating as this metal man just careens off of this large stone block across the hallway. And you see him just like bounce off of this thing and then just like bounce back against the wall on the other side and just kind of like rattle a little bit inside of his own shell. And just a little bit down the hall you hear <laughs> Do it again! Do it again! That was so funny! <laughs> As Jot is just dying laughing right now. I never said I don't. That was uh, some already. Hey. Essentially, I just pretty much leaped from the ground to the wall, then off the wall into it, and tried to ram it with my shoulder. <laughs> and you bounced off of it like a pinball, sir. Bounced like a pinball. <laughs> you see, uh, zigzag, my head. zigzag down the hallway, just kind of looking at you. He like turns his head, like sideways, just, just doing, like the tiniest <laughs> little crook. And Mara, you're the only one that understands him, and it pretty much amounts to what the fuck. <laughs> I, I, I tried to turn myself into a cannonball. <laughs> so did you? Do, do, do you need some help there? I, I'm not going to be much help, but. Looks like I you get. I get right back up. It didn't really phase me. <laughs> uh, so uh, can I use like stone cunning to figure out the right way to apply the force we need? Um, I would just even without a roll, I would say that you think that with enough bodies pushing against this thing, you could probably push this plug out of the way. Yeah. It's gonna. Okay. Right, then yeah. Everybody line up and push. <laughs> push together. Sure. It's more. It's more of a combined effort that needs to be done than any one or two people's strength. Yeah, Gibbs. Like. Gibbs just bought a T-shirt. Nice. Now you get that kind of world <laughs> swag. These are really. I hope you got the comfort. Uh, there's one that's the uh, the little more expensive one. The the weave of the shirt. Super fucking comfy though. I got that. So I guess yeah, we all turn to the side and put a shoulder to the door. I'll help. Okay, so as uh, you guys all kind of start pushing in unison, so the uh, the trick here uh, was that it had to be four people with a strength score of 48 or higher in order to move this thing. So, uh, in combination, you guys okay, were... Okay, so... Eight, cool. Shit, me and Rattul got... I don't know where Rattul's at, but... He's got <laughs> almost half of that by himself, the but so between the two or three of you, once the third person starts getting in there, that fourth person starts pushing. Um, you guys are able to. It's just as this huge stone block slowly moves out of the way, and you guys see this chamber. And in this chamber, you see that beyond this plug is a small foyer holding three sealed, I'll, I'll put the guys that were pushing in, uh, you see that it is holding three sealed urns on the east and west sides. And to the south are double doors of bronze with glyphs worked into their faces. And you can, uh, Rafiki, you can see that these ancient glyphs are scribed in Ullman. Would you like to take a moment to read? Um, you're, you're in robot mode. I can't hear you. I could see your I lips. I can't hear you at all. Could see your lips moving, but I don't hear anything, sir. You got choppy for a second, and then the mic cut. Wouldn't be a week for us without some t some TDs, huh? If we didn't have some technical difficulties, it wouldn't be live stream D and D, guys. 
Uh, I still cannot hear you, sir. Maybe plug in, unplug and plug back in or something. Oh, leave it and coming back. That's what I... It's true. That might work as well. Shall see. Are you back? There he is. Hello. Cannot hear you. Oh, uh, just... Can barely hear you. Like I heard something, but it came through like almost like static on a phone. Oh. It's being choppy. Like it's not a good connection. Um, I can see your your window lighting up, so I can see that you're talking, but it's just really choppy. So. But it is 9 o'clock, so let me go ahead and do this. Uh, what you do read, uh, Mitch, because I know you can't hear me, uh, what you do read on these doors, the glyphs that are carved into these giant bronze doors, it says, here lies Tlokas Poplokas, master of the others, who is like the wind and the night. And that my friends, is going to be where we ended off for tonight. With this door before us, oh. this latest challenge, yet another door to test our metal. At least it's not a staircase. Let's, let's just throw that out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Logan. Look at him. He's mad. <laughs> stare uh-huh he's like i know you're throwing shade at me motherfucker all right so um definitely come back and see us again next week we are going to see what this door has beyond it and see what challenge faces our party this dragon spirit fellowship has gone right into the deep end of this pool let me tell you so this is going to be fun. I am excited to get into this next week. Um, so you know, like last campaign, or not campaign, but dungeon that we went to, it was like started off kind of slow and just slowly built and the craziness and the craziness until it just got to this crazy stressful level and everyone was like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, this one's the this reverse. One's it starts off full what the fuck and you guys just stepped into it. So I mean, can't wait for crash. next week. <laughs> Um, Talking freaking crabs. Yeah. So, this is going to be fun. I am excited. Um, come back and see us again, same time, hopefully. Um, should be starting around 6 to 6.30. Uh, if I can't get off work uh, earlier like I did this week, then it would probably be starting at 7. Uh, that is Pacific time. Uh, please come back and join us again. We definitely love uh, seeing all these new people, people coming to hang out with us. And, uh, and uh, we enjoy that. Thanks for taking the time out of your lives to hang out with us. I mean, it's quarantine, so why not, you know, hang out and watch some D&D. &D. Do a little creative, fun storytelling. Take your minds off of all of this craziness that's going on in the world right now. And just, uh, you know, have fun hanging out with us. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good nerdy fun, and we enjoy it. And I sure hope you guys enjoy watching it with us. Um, please take care of yourselves out there. Wash your hands, all those good things. Um, we're watching you. We know who's not watching your hands out there, so make sure you're doing that shit. Other than that, Santa please, Claus knows when you don't wash your hands. Santa Claus knows you're not washing your hands, <laughs> motherfuckers. All right, so please, uh, please be safe out there in all seriousness. Um, I hope everybody's doing okay. Hopefully, we're all going to get through this. We will together, and that's going to be the best way to go about this thing. So, love y'all. Um, keep it real. Come back see us again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel, and uh, we'll have some more D&D storytelling fun and i'll get to finally you know just have a party wipe i'm just gonna just go ahead and murder all of these guys with the worst thing that they've come no. across yet so, wait what wait what did i i'm sorry did i say that out loud i'm sorry guys my bad that's my fault should we maybe, maybe we should just leave this that's alone my, that's my fault i didn't maybe mean maybe it. the players should just go ahead and form a union so the dm can't do it <laughs> i didn't mean to say that out loud my bad guys <laughs> I still cannot hear you. Exactly. 
characters with all the same stuff and just put a two next to their names. <laughs> Part two. After this two point oh. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Thanks for watching. Like We're gonna see you guys excited. next week. Take care of yourselves and uh, come back and see us again. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Hey, we heard him. There he was.